Okay, I've got another beer from High Road Brewery. Pur and Blackberry Goza, 4.9%. So that's the one that I picked out. They're in the keyser. Put the hand in. Lucky dip. This is what's come out. So, a Goza. Goza the Gozarian. Um, I'm not an aficionado on um, sour beers. It smells fruity. I like a Berliner Weiss. I think the difference between a Berliner Weiss, I could be wrong by this, and a Goza is like the salt, isn't it? Put a little bit of salt in the, the Goza. Maybe a little bit higher as well too. 4.9%. Now obviously that's home brewing. I don't know. I don't know what the BGSCP says like, but... In fact, shall we look at what the BGSCP says? A highly carbonated tart and fruity wheat ale with a restrained coriander. I'm not sure if Andrew's put the coriander in on salt character, low bitterness. Very refreshing, bright flavours, high attenuation. It's got a murky kind of... It's that blackberry colour I brewed. A, in fact, the last Berliner I did was did have blackberries in as well so there's a coincidence and it was exactly the same color as that so it's it's a bit like strawberry but it's also a bit like rhubarb you know so very nice little pink um is the cap is mainly white but there's a tiny little pink tint so if you're brewing with like raspberries or something like that it would be just like really pink so but there is a tiniest little pink in it Looks like decent carbonation as well, although I'm in a, another lager glass, like the one last night. So murky though. So murky. Does that mean, it must mean it's fruity, right? Very fruity. So pear and blackberry goza. So there's pear in this as well. On the nose, it's mainly just the blackberry. And that little tart aroma, if aromas can be tart, but you know what I mean. You can tell. I mean, um, I can, I'm convinced that I can smell a bit of pear in that, but I don't know if it's because I'm sitting looking at the bottle over there. I should probably turn it away and see. And that's kind of, you know, subconscious and all that. Okay, it's a very light aroma. It's not, like, crazy. It's not like, um, you know, if you did, like, a raspberry wheat or something like that, it would be stinking of raspberries. It's, it's a little bit fruity and it's got that little tartness. Okay, I'm going in. Cheers. Gets cold. Probably a little bit colder than what it should be. But I don't have space in the fridges, you see. So I had to put it in the keyser. Plenty of space in there. Plenty of it. It's very, it's very smooth. Nice bit of fruity flavour on it. It's kind of a, actually, a, it's a medium to light mouthfeel, I would say. And medium as in, it's like, it's got that, it's got like a wheat type of um, smoothness to it. But it's still a light beer, you know. Getting, it's it's not crazy tartness. Um, I don't really. I'm not a big. I'm not a huge lover of sour beers. Um, but this is kind of my level. Uh, I will drink them, if somebody buys me them, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I, I don't really buy an awful lot of them. Other than like Berliners and um, maybe a goes in then again, but. It's not too tart, although it is It is definitely in there. And you get that, the flavour. And the flavour is not, I'm not really, it's not pure blackberry. Now I know there's pear in it as well, but I'm not getting clear blackberry and clear pear. But there is a little, note of something in there maybe like stewed fruit or something like that the, 
in terms of the salt as well, too, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it salty, but there is something that I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm expecting it, am I? But after it goes down, there is definitely something something lingering there, which could be the salt. I'm not really sure. I don't really drink enough of these to know. I remember drinking a beer a while ago and it, the, the the USP was that it was brewed with salt water and it was like a lager or something like that. can't really remember but but yeah sorry I'm, and I, was, I was in another place I was going back that was years ago and back there I'm trying to remember what that tasted like I mean at the time I think it was just it was tasted like a beer. It didn't really taste any different. But I'm thinking that taste on the back. It is like a. The more I think about it, it is more like a, a salty kind of finish. But I don't know. No, I'm thinking of seawater. I'm thinking, does it taste like seawater? Come on. Jeez, that's going down really quickly, isn't it? I like that. I do like that. I'm going to definitely brew a Berliner soon. I've got the Philly Sour. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't really worked out anything. The last time I did it, I used the Blackberries. We'll maybe try on something different this time. Whatever we can get. That's not going to cost a bomb. Because everything costs a fortune these days. I like that. I really like that. Greetings. I am here with another beer from High Road Brewery. Them sexy labels. Wow. So awesome. Um, Fug Life Oatmeal Stout 5%. So, Fug Life. This is obviously Fuggles Hops in here. And these are Andy's own homegrown hops. No less. So. I'm guessing this is off the keg. So I don't know why I'm looking at it. As if there's a load of gunk going to come out of it. Gotta do that, can you? You get one of these bottles. So yeah, these are on these homegrown Fuggles hops. And I'm interested to see. I mean, obviously, I think dark beers are perfect for homegrown hops. Certainly when you live as far north as we do. Um, because I don't think they really work in light beers. Because God knows I have made a lot of light beers with my hops. And just it just doesn't, it's not right at all. Dark beers, you get away with it more. So, there it is there. And again, it is Andy. So he could probably make a bloody nipa. Out of his Fuggles hops, and it will turn out brilliant. So, okay. It is black as tar. Okay, well, no, hold on. There's a little bit of kind of more brown at the top, bottom, so maybe it's not as black as tar, but um, not too much of a head. It was clear when it was being poured. The carbonation was low. That's absolutely fine. You can see, though, we've got a sexy bit of lacing coming on there. So, something's happening. I'm not really expecting to get an awful lot. It smells like a stout. I never really like doing any kind of reviews on stouts and stuff because I don't really know. It's like, it tastes like a stout. I don't really know. Unless it has a clear chocolate or clear coffee. Um, taste, it's difficult to, to, to do anything, you know. So what, uh, what else is in this? I don't know. We did do a video on this ages ago, but it was like ages ago, I think. So, God knows. I think it was probably New Year's. Maybe Christmas time or something like that. It was a while ago. So, all I can remember from that video, really I should have watched the video beforehand. Homegrown hops. He did a wet hop beer. It's an oatmeal stout, I think. Does it say? Oh, it actually literally says it on the book. 
oatmeal stout, so there's there's flecked oats in it, I'm guessing. I think that's a, quite a quite a, a macker guess as well. Concerning it says it. Okay. It smells like it has a rich smell, like a I want to say like a kind of like a wine type of you know, that type of thing. A full you know full aroma. If that makes sense. But you know, first stout. So it has got that dark dark kind of trickle type of I don't know, aroma. I'm not really sure where I'm going with that, but let's go in for a taste and see. Now it's quite cold in the hand, obviously it's in the geyser. And let's just get a drink, shall we? Oh, that's quite that's quite good it's very smooth just say it is definitely way too cold okay with hindsight I should have taken it out a, a long time before making this video but you know we're halfway through it now it is really smooth quite low carbonation it might have been a bit better if I'd have taken it out. Nice good body on it. Five percent. Maybe medium. But the low carbonation is making it seem like probably more so very very nice on the taste there is like a an almost like a spicy note to the finish which I'm guessing is the fuggles a little bit of bitterness but initially what you get is the the really delicious malt flavor it's not extremely, it doesn't taste extremely coffee or anything like that or anything one thing. It's more, it's more like, it's more like that really nice sweet flavour you get with like a hookum stump or something like that, you know. And then on the back end, as I say, there's that kind of taste. It's a little bit, bit of spice, bit of bitterness. I really like to taste that one, it's a bit warmer. Um, and we might get a bit more of that. So I might just leave it and um, come back, I think, because I really want to try and taste it once a bit warmer than that. In fact, I might actually put it into the fridge because we got one that's at 23 degrees. So, so yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's been, I don't know, 10 minutes. 15 minutes. I put up say, the heater in there and that's what we've got up with. I've actually done a whole other Homebrew Wednesday video while we're waiting there so at least I've made the most of my time. I wasn't just sitting here on bloody Facebook or something. So yeah. So there it is there. Look at that. Look at this. Wow. It's looking pretty good isn't it? It's definitely less cold that's for sure. Really nice taste on that. There is a, a real note of caramel in there, definitely. And it is that same kind of caramel taste that you get from the hookum. It's really smooth, really amazing. Yes, see my hops this year. Definitely doing a stout. Definitely doing a stout. A Saz stout. Who would have seen that coming? Okay, thank you, Andy, again for the three beers. All been fantastic. Um, that's it. Okay, I'll see you again sometime.